Oh, welcome back there. I hope the anticipation of splitting the party up didn't rile you up too much. I know it must have, though, so let me calm you down a little bit. Let's tell you everything that ended up happening. And, just so you know, it ended up happening all right. Not without a couple of hiccups, though, of course. A very strange man entered the Belmont Tavern on the day of the plan. A gallant scale coat that seemed to be a regular at the inn. The man who called himself Dalfrey Evans greeted the party and welcomed them to Bilms. However, during his talk with them, he seemed to know more about the party than he was originally letting on. Our heroes prepared themselves for the evening. Marth and Max headed off to the encampment as looked down in Thames snuck over to the university to investigate. Pivot and Alice, however, got rizzed out and headed off to the party at the same time. Thames did not know what to expect to find at the university, as no normal being has laid foot on it since the city's fall. However, what he did find was rather troubling. The once proud walls that produced some of the finest mines in Petovia were now harboring a foul evil. Archbishop Redisith had formed a church of chaos and was using some of the research facilities for his own nefarious purposes. Twisted and dark experiments were being conducted at the cost of fell goblin children and animals. Thames had seen enough, and he fought the archbishop along with his monolithic servant, the elephant, as looked down, saved the fell goblin children from a crispy, maga burning fate. As Thames and looked down heroically left the research facility, they heard sirens screaming from the encampment, a sure sign that Marth and Max were having a troublesome time dealing with the encampment. On their way over to assist in a matter they had heard the code word for help, a woman screamed up, look up, from the direction of the mansion. Thames wanted to check on Marth, but the Petovian prince had everything shirred up at the accountment. Tim's asked Marth for his assistance in putting out the fire at the research facility as he didn't wish for the research to go to waste. And that leaves us with Alice and Pivot and their splendid evening at the Pilms mansion. Rel was shocked and excited to see Pivot walk through her doors. She expressed that she was expecting Soliet to come to the party to explain her plans for a secret project titled Project Rinthal. However, seeing her dreamy lover boy's face instead put her heart at ease. She gave Alice and Pivot a grand tour of the mansion, even stopping by her bedroom where she tried to work her magic on Pivot. The party had many rich guests, including none other than Dalfrey Evans himself. Dalfrey decided to read the fortune of Pivot and Alice, telling Pivot to keep his enemies far but his friends further away. Alice, however, did not receive much of a fortune, rather a piece of paper, slipped into her hand that simply stated, One of you will die tonight. When Alice confronted Dalfrey about this one on the dance floor, he explained to her that he is clairvoyant and that his future was set in stone, unless Alice and Piven followed his instructions to A.T. Alice, however, being intoxicated, nearly flubbed her instructions. Everything almost crumbled when Pivot and Alice were spotted by Rel going into the bathroom together. Alice received a call from her father asking where she had been and why she hadn't returned to the city yet. He ordered her to drop everything and return immediately. He then left the call stating for her to kill the fell goblin as a means to cover her tracks. Alice, however, did not want to kill Pivot and the two of them returned to the party. At 8 p.m. dinner was served, but the main guest of the event did not come down the stairs. The Radiant Knight, the right hand of the goddess herself, refused to have company with Captain Rell. He instead sent his lieutenant downstairs, who greeted Rell by telling her that she was under arrest for siphoning funds from the Mechalite and she would be removed from her position. Rell did not take kindly to this and rushed upstairs to confront the Radiant Knight. Alice ran upstairs shortly after remembering her instructions from Dalfrey to find the guest bedroom and to hide under the bed. She heard the two arguing through the walls, which ended with the Radiant Knight crumbling the connecting walls of the two bedrooms with one slash of his sword and sending Captain Rell to a quick grave. 
Alice was eventually found by the Radiant Knight and barely survived their encounter. After the Radiant Knight knocked Alice out, he went downstairs to find the party had come to an exciting climax. Pivot and Delfry fended off Rail's troops and Lieutenant Greaves until Thames and Lookdown arrived. The battle was close, but it ended with our heroes being victorious. Martha arrived late only to find Dalfrey bow before the Radiant Knight, apologizing for betraying his old friend. The Radiant Knight swiftly dealt judgment to Dalfrey, and that Marth go to Hellspring Village. How will the party survive now that the entire Mechalite Kingdom knows of Marth's unexpected awakening? Oh, I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> My name is King Decker, and I'm here to invite you to an evening not like most others. An evening where four streamers are pitted up against one another in hopes for fame and fortune. Will one streamer rise to the top and unlock fortunes like no other? Or will they all fall victim to the whole result? Dungeon. Oh, welcome Anything back else? there. My brain doesn't work. Um. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. What it be? What it do? It's your boy Key Decker. How we doing, Dungeoneers? Hope you are ready for another fun and exciting episode of Mart's Dungeon. We are on episode 11. Uh, last time we left off with a very exciting conclusion to our uh, party. Nobody died or it came even close. It definitely didn't happen. Um, totally. Yeah, everything was totally fine and hunky-dory. Uh, but after a, a small little short rest that was well-earned... The party went into the research facility and managed to uh, save the research of uh, Archbishop Redkith. And they have just exited the outside. By now, it's it's pretty late in the evening. Um, you you are all pretty, pretty tired. And uh, you do hear a little bit of commotion uh, in town. It sounds like uh, people are gathering. People are gathering. Any deaths are Mechalite propaganda? <laughs> True. Any deaths reported are Mechalite propaganda. No deaths happened here. <laughs> there is no problem in Bilms. There is no war in Bilms. Shall we be sheeple and gather with the crowd? Yes. We will hurl obscenities at Marth for being a terrible leader. <laughs> Yeah, Tim's will. Tim's after saying "go lead them," we'll just start heckling him. <laughs> <laughs> you terrible this leader! Is this is exactly what I was planning on. Why are you up there? Go away! Get off the stage! <laughs> <laughs> Boo! How many Boo. times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> <laughs> um, as you kind of start agreeing to convene over in town, Alice is going to simply look at the rest of the group. And uh, just say, yeah, go on ahead. I just going <laughs> to turn around and begin walking off towards the uh, the mansion. What a Sigma. <laughs> she looks Turning very, very tired. <laughs> Did she T-pose the entire time? Yeah, she definitely lifted up her arms and then levitated just ever so slightly. Okay. Just for a second, though. Just only uh, the amount of time that look down would be able to catch it. No, she before looking down. Yeah, before, before looking, looking down there. once again. <laughs> Shit. Damn it. Uh, so all of you are going to the main part of town? Yeah. Perfect. Yep. You, yes, sir. you start heading down the yellow brick road. Oh, man. Past the hammock that look, I forgot that I put through a, here. Through a house. <laughs> yeah, look, look down. <laughs> it just simply walks through the house. Oh man, we got T-posing and clipping going on. Oh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, you actually, uh, for the first time ever, just get to walk through the main gates of the uh, encampment here. And it's a, it's a pretty pretty liberating feeling. 
as you just kind of uh, reach the gates and push them open yourselves and walk on through. And um, as you do walk on through, you see that there are indeed quite a few people um, from Bilms gathering around Belmont Tavern. Let us go gather with them. Uh, Tim's will probably take a uh, a few steps away from the crowd, though, because he's looking extra monstrous with a hole in his chest. <laughs> he's looking a little worked up today, is what I'd say. Yeah, you, you start mm. you start kind of uh, walking closer, and Tim's is just like ever so slightly diverging from the group <laughs> as you're heading closer <laughs> to the the. Uh, the uh, crowd here. Um, yeah, they're probably not going to be paying attention to you. Yeah, also Tim's doesn't want the plague. Uh, that is fair. That's this fair. is uh, this is quite the COVID <laughs> gathering here. I do enjoy the, uh, we're all Especially out in front of Belmont. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Yo, who the fuck let Penelope out? Yo, this is not a safe place for a child. Has anyone been watching Penelope? <laughs> rat, nope. <laughs> Steven has. True. Steven has. Uh, where would you like to uh, gather up, Thames? You looking to uh, just like stay like back in and around like here? Uh, I was thinking a little bit more northwards, like I'll probably start. just yeah, <laughs> about there. Just just slightly out of vision. You're like kind of just <laughs> every, you get right behind the building and just like half of your face is peeking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, as you do approach, you see. Uh, quite a few people that you had seen already in Bilms, all gathering around um, the tavern itself. And um, so Pivot and Lookdown actually just both roll a um, observation for me. Oh, yeah, Captain. First roll of the night. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 22. Um, four. And a four. So, uh, Pivot, you... Uh, being the height that you are, you don't necessarily see over the heads of everybody in, in this crowd here. Um, it seems that they're kind of just blocking your view. But um, look down with his his kind of perfect vision here, especially in the dark. Um, spots that Penelope is hiding uh, behind a tree. And you see um, uh, her just kind of like watching the rest of the crowd as well as Marth. All right. I do nothing about it. Perfect. And, um... <laughs> Thank you for the biddies. Thank you, Jakers, for the biddies. Appreciate it. And, um... Marth just kind of looks out to the rest of the crowd and, um, sees that you guys are, uh, indeed joining up with, with, uh, the crowd as well, and he clears his throat and says... Citizens of Petovia and residents of Bilms, heed the word of your king. Macalite has taken much from us. They've stripped us of our lives, our liberty, our homes, even using our children for their own nefarious needs. But no more. Nacolite, under the guise of divine judgment, has been snuffing out our flames one by one. But a new beacon flies through the skies tonight. Brighter and more brilliant than ever. Ignited from the embers that exist in the minds and hearts of every single one of you. Now, I remember, hard as it may be, 50 years ago, when Bilms was a bustling city, a true spectacle to behold. Some of you I know must remember as well. I admittedly spent more time here in Bilms in my childhood than I did in Sens, the capital itself, much to my father's worry. I would 
go to the Petovian National Library to read up on Petovian culture, history, enjoy a nice sit in the park. And there was a <laughs> an Adams Street Fair that I remember every single Sunday. There was a woman my age. She she sold the sweetest caramel apples. They were so delicious. One of my fondest memories was visiting Bilms when a graduating class was graduating from Bilms Institute itself. The graduating classes were always so small. They had such a high standard for who would graduate. But in that small group of individuals, I saw a gleam in their eyes, a hope for the future. And that is what Mechalite fears most. I miss those days in Bilms, and I miss those days in Petovia. I know that not all of you do remember, but the ones who do, do you not owe it to your children, to your grandchildren, to give them the future of the past that was stripped away from them? I will not lie to you. Films will be attacked again. Mechalite will stop at nothing to see that your determination is buried deep beneath the ground. And the harder that you resist, the harder they will make it. But if there's one thing I do know, is that knowledge is the greatest weapon that we all have when facing an enemy. And who has a greater knowledge than Bilms, the city of knowledge itself. What say you citizens of Petovia? Will you stand by your king and restore your country to its former glory? What say you? And uh, this is a reputation uh, level one checkpoint, which you have all passed. Uh, the audience all very excitedly claps and cheers. Um, you see the older residents, um, some of these, these elderly residents, uh, you can see just tears welling up in their eyes as it has been 50 years since they've seen any sort of hope in returning the city that they loved to uh, what it used to be. Just any, any just inkling of hope. And uh, the people start kind of uh, talking all amongst each other. And uh, Max kind of moves up to Marth and says, I'd say that was, uh, that was a pretty good job, my lord. Thanks, Max. I hope that I could give them just a little bit of hope. And uh, Marth looks over to uh, the group here. And kind of waves you guys in. Walk over, right? Tim's will like even slower than normally walk over, but he'll join. I'd fall by Vivid. Perfect. Uh you kind of just like <laughs> just kind of like on the, the outside of the light here, you kind of uh wait. And uh um, helping the monster uh connotation there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it tends to socially awkward. <laughs> so. It's got a connotation. Uh, Marth approaches you guys and kind of uh, turns to you and says, What do you think? How's everybody look? I shrug. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, that's what uh, <laughs> that's pretty exactly what Toad was going to say <laughs> um, and Marth like kind of like runs over to you guys and he says come on guys it's it's okay you <laughs> mix in with the crowd have some fun tonight we can relax we can get our footing and tomorrow we will Prep for the journey ahead of us. It will be a long journey, and 
you know, we deserve to have a little rest and a little bit of happiness celebration. And, uh, Come on, you non sociables, go be sociable. <laughs> What's that, Pivot? Sorry. <laughs> well, I for, I for one just left a party and it wasn't that fun. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, baby, let's go. One more time, one more time. Okay. Uh, Marth uh, looks to the rest of you once more and says, uh, If you wish to stay in the inn, which. Uh, he looks over to Thames, <laughs> seeing your gigantic rash that you had on your body. Uh, and he says, you are more than welcome to stay for the free night. The citizens of Bilms themselves have granted us 5,000 gold for our venture. And they are going to give us discounted prices for any supplies that we need moving forward. That's rather generous. Exceptionally generous, yes. It is appreciated and, and kind. I will fix the wall that has been destroyed and left the security breach for, uh, well, quite frankly, for us to get in. So. Yeah, I agree. We'll need to do a lot of work here before we end up going. Um. The, the citizens themselves said that if you need to commission them for any work to help you with any of the construction, that they would be more than willing to lend a hand. Amateurs. Amateur. Tim's will uh, notice, uh, oh, like nod his head and notice that Bavelli's in the crowd. <laughs> and he's kind of like, he's like doing that thing where he leans back and forth and like has his, his hands on his, his uh, straps going around him. <laughs> Just oh, eagerly no. looking at you. Uh, and as you are talking. And I look at him. What's that? And he looks at me. And I look at him. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to dart back and forth not to make eye contact playing a, a, a game of visual ping pong with each other and um, as uh, as you're all talking uh, the kids kind of start congregating with one another and uh, like chatting and kind of like nervously uh, talking amongst themselves and um, uh, you see Christine here kind of uh, shoo the kids to uh, just be like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And uh, they start approaching you and moving through the uh, crowd. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And they, oh, no. they run up to look down and they say, Thames, Thames! You're so cool, Thames! <laughs> uh, what? What? They said that you saved them from burning magma. That's really impressive. No. <laughs> Can you pick me up like you picked up the other kids? <laughs> and they're just kind of like all kind of swarming around you. Just like, like uh, kind of like poking you and prodding you and like excitedly like jumping up and down. I... Point over at Thames and just say that Thames. No, my name is Look Down. <laughs> I look down. Uh, and I pick up the kid that said that they wanted to be picked up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Except it's as awkward as you think it is. It's literally like just the under the, sh the armpits hold. Yeah. Um, as you go to pick this, these kids up, so so you say this, right? You say that that is Thames over there, and they all do like the the synchronized head turn to look over at this giant monolith of a monster, and uh, like their smiles just completely disappear from their faces and just kind of like turn into frowns. And as you pick the kid up, he's like dead weight, like staring at Thames. <laughs> And uh, they they are like, <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> and they start to walk away. <laughs> are you still holding the kid in your hands? 
Unless they squirm out, yeah. No, they're just kind of like awkwardly dead waiting while still like looking over to Thames. Uh, I think that uh, Thames will try to get a little closer to the crowd of people that said that they would help with the wall. Uh, and, and we'll just say, anyone willing to assist with the wall will... The construction of the wall will start in 7 in the morning. It must be done sooner rather than later. Oh, if it isn't a turly ad. Ah, uh, well, uh, it's, it's quite amazing to spot something like you, my dear. Uh, uh, of course, I will, I will commission my grandson to help you in the morning. And I'm sure that my husband would be willing to help as well. That is very kind of you and them. Uh, Tim says when not liking being marbled over. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had the last one, in fact. And uh, this woman kind of walks over to you and says, Well, of course, I am pregnant, but I'm more than willing to pitch in where I can. I can't do any heavy lifting, but I will do whatever I can to uh, assist in the matter. Well... Everyone needs a manager that can get all the workers whipped into shape. <laughs> she kind of like, she's like extremely flattered because uh, she is usually just looked at as a sex tool. So um, she just like very happily smiles and bows her head and uh, like says, oh, I'll go talk to the rest of them. I'll get them to help as well. Anything will be appreciated. Of course. She walks back into the crowd. Tim's back's up five feet. <laughs> the old lady kind of like walks just like ever so slightly closer, seeing like you back up, just like making, just uh, kind of just like looking at uh, her heroes that have saved the day. Well, it seems like uh, everybody's taken a liking to you guys. Uh, Tim's looks over at Marth and just mouse. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives you like a a small like nod, um, as if to say, "Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> you have a job to do." <laughs> and um, he is going to. Uh, like kind of just tip his head to the to the crowd and say, "Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow we'll begin construction and start working to a better tomorrow. But for now, make sure to get some rest. Thank you for everything." And the uh, crowd starts to disperse a little bit and uh, head off in their various directions. <laughs> Sven goes back over to his stand. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I everybody... noticed he was standing as far away from poss as possible from Marth. Wait, who's who's? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he literally went up as far back as possible. He's like, meh, 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 meh. Meh, meh, meh. everybody ends up leaving, uh, and like Bavelli kind of just stays there for like a minute just to see if you guys will like come over to uh, talk to him. Look down, you may want to put the child down now. It looks terrified. <laughs> oh. I place, I, I place the child down. And uh, he's like as stiff as death. Like, literally, like, <laughs> just <laughs> shaking. <laughs> and he just kind of like stiffly just starts walking away back towards the houses. And disappears. I terrified the poor child. Look down. I look down. <laughs> I that knew mm. did it pay the man back his bottle of wine yeah yeah I was already planning on that <laughs> just gonna walk over to Bavilli that was given out of the kindness of his heart alright 
<laughs> it was only well, actually, it was only actually, the actually other thing. That, <laughs> that was literally the conversation. That is true. He he did lend the bottle of wine uh just for the situation, but the uh <laughs> the the weapon, he was like, Yeah, you're gonna have to pay me back for this. <laughs> he, I did hey, look look, he was he happily handed that. Alright, he happily mm. gave me that weapon. Mm. He said, Hey, don't go into combat without a weapon. What are you nuts? Take this. He literally old man and Zelda to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're totally right. That's so exactly what he meant. The, the valley. So you kind no, of. He did say it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Did, did he say those exact words? I hope he did. No, he did not. He said dangerous to say, go alone. <laughs> <laughs> take a piece. No, he he did literally say, "Where? What are you doing? Going to combat without a weapon?" And then gave me that. <laughs> that is true. And then he said something along the lines of, uh, I, I expect to be paid back. <laughs> he said right, that you know vid in the going, I'm going to the VODs. I'm going to the VODs. You keep, you keep going, but I'm going to the VODs. <laughs> and, uh, so Bavelli just, like, sees Pivid just approaching ever so slowly. And, uh, he just, like, gives you, like, a humph face. But it, it, you can tell that it's very you can you can tell it's very forced. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's what he really really wants to do. He's just like having trouble holding it. As he approaches, like, what does that look for? Are you saying this out loud? Constipated. Yes. <laughs> uh, I. I believe I'm not appreciated. Oh, so you don't want this bottle of wine, then? Oh! Vintage bottle of red. <laughs> mm. And he kind of just, like, smacks his hands together and starts rubbing them. He says, oh, I think I can, uh... I never said that. Mm. So the purpose of giving him this bottle is a little bit twofold. It's to pay back for some of the weapon that you gave to look down earlier and to replace the bottle of wine you also gave him earlier. <laughs> I know this is quite more expensive than what you had prior. Mm, that weapon itself was not inexpensive, but... Uh... Yes, I, I can pay you back more as time goes on, but for the moment, this and... <laughs> Pivid pulls out like a small bag of a hundred gold, but that's about all I can offer for the moment. Uh, he takes the bottle of wine and like, kind of quickly hugs you, and uh, says, "Forget about it. It's okay. I uh, made that like a bandit here, if you know what I mean." He's the one who looted the place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Also, he did say you're gonna have to pay me back, but he was, you know, he was nice about he, it. Yeah, no, oh, he was very reluctant. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you kind of like hand him uh, like the bottle of wine, and he starts like very like eagerly inspecting it because he just he loves just wine more than anything else in the entire world, and. Uh, are you sure this isn't keen? <laughs> it's my whole personality. It's Italian keen. Projection, oh, projection. And um, he he like, like kind of starts spinning in a circle a little bit and, and starts singing. The moon, she is fine, but the wine is a finer. <laughs> I have everyone spinning today. <laughs> and uh, he starts heading off. And, uh, he's, like, sticks the, the wine in his back, his backpack, and slowly but surely starts, like, um, turning into mud in front of you and starts sliding into the ground, uh, before he kind of just, like, disappears, uh, into the grass and starts sliding away. Uh... Wait a minute. Can we see them now? 
What's that? Can we see them hiding behind a tree now? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Penelope, Penelope you can <laughs> you can come over here. Uh, and she like very bashfully starts like walking out from under the tree, and uh, like walks forward a little bit, and then does that like kid thing where they stop walking and just stand there. Wait, <laughs> Steven grew. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I know it's grown. Holy shit! It's already full grown. <laughs> But yeah, she kind of just, uh, uh, like, pauses there, and she's just kind of, like, um, uh, rubbing her foot into the ground and, like, looking into the ground bashfully. Uh, Tim's will actually get closer now that there's no longer crowds of, uh, spectators. What is wrong? Mm, nothing. I know something's wrong. Mm, bored. Uh, he'll look around that pivot and look down, and I guess even Marth will be like, We didn't leave someone in charge of her, did we? Ah. Do you want to walk around the booms on my shoulders, or rather I walk around, you sit? Mm. She just kind of like starts mumbling to herself a little bit. And uh, you see that her attention just gets ever so slightly uh, diverted as she sees um, like one of the uh, the small kids... Uh, like, run up to you, Thames, and she, like, follows them with her eyes, and this small child, um, like, looks around to see if any of the other kids were watching, and, um, she, like, puts her hand up for a high five. <laughs> like, for Thames to give a high five? Yeah. Uh, Thames will put one hand on his coin purse and give a high five. <laughs> And uh, she she goes to give you a high five, and you just hear like a wee, <laughs> and she uh, like kind of turns around and uh, starts running away. And like you just hear her uh, say like in the background, ever so slightly, "He's so cool." And um, you see that Penelope kind of once again follows her with her eyes, and then like looks back down to the ground. Have you made friends? Mm, no. Tim thinks I internally I'm the worst person to help you make friends. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll try, I guess. Nobody over here is any better. True. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, there's one person there, and it's Marth. But... Hey, yo, Penelope! <laughs> <laughs> Max, do something useful. Go make f this person friends. No, do not do that. <laughs> uh, Tim, I, I think, still has the airplane toy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll give it to Penelope and say... If you want to make friends before it gets too late, then perhaps show them that. It could be something that they find interesting. They're... It's different. Hmm? They're... Special. What's different about them? They're here. And I got put mm. Can Thames try to like decipher what she means? Yeah. 
You can tell that she's like really just batting around words like kids do when they really don't want to tell you what's wrong. Um, but it seems she like feels she left out. Yeah, she feels incredibly left out uh, in the fact that all these kids were special and the fact that they saw something within these kids, so kept them in the encampment. Um, but for Penelope, she was sent off to Soliet to be killed. Mm-hmm. Penelope, I do not think that you are special. You are now amongst us. You... They aren't. And uh, Marth also kind of like walks uh, towards you and says, you're amongst a company of heroes yourself, Penelope. And I would say that the company is not complete without you. Tim's will very, uh, very lowly mutter, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and he like nods his head. And uh, did you did you hand the, uh, the toy off to her? Yep. Um, Marth is going to kind of just like take her hand and say, let's get you back to the castle. In the morning, I want you to help out the kids uh, with building the uh, the building here. Or sorry, the wall here. You got that? I'll introduce you if you'd like. And uh, like she kind of just like nods and uh, starts like just like whimpering and not crying anymore. She starts like sniffling a little bit. And Martha brings her back to the castle. Child labor bug. Child labor. Hey, there's nothing against it in this world. That's true. true. As a matter of fact, that's all we've really seen in this world. <laughs> in fact, it, it's on the. It's very, very low on the list of fucked up things. <laughs> somehow. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> uh, and Max. Man, I made half the list myself. <laughs> Max, uh, like looks. A category. Yeah. <laughs> Max is. Um, he just kind of like looks at you guys and is like, "I don't really know if um, I don't know if I want to like stay in the bathtub or if I want to stay here tonight. It's a tough decision for me." What about you? I'm not getting the rash again. I'm going back to the castle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. What about you guys? You wanna, you wanna bunk up? You wanna, you wanna hang out with old old Max? <laughs> First drinks are on me. <laughs> I'm I lonely. Just my way to the castle. Okay. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> Thames, are you headed off to the castle as well? Um. Uh. Tim's will do one of the few acts of goodwill that he has done towards Max and uh, walk over uh, with like a few gold pieces in hand and just like reach for his wrist, like just place it in his palm. I, you, hey. You were useful today. Keep doing that. What? And we'll, and we'll walk back towards the castle. And he's just like fumbling over his words. He's just like, oh, yeah, oh, my, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just completely speechless, doesn't know what to say. It's kind of like the nicest thing that somebody said to him in a very long time. <laughs> and Thames is harsh, but fair. <laughs> you did good. As, as you all start making some distance uh, and are kind of like no longer in like sight range, um, Max just looks at you, Pippin, and is just like, The night is young. We could, uh, bond. I don't know. It could be fun. I don't mind staying a while, but I will forewarn. I will likely be looking over some notes later. Sure, sure, of course. I completely understandable. Whew. Man, I feel like I was trying to court a woman in there. He's just like <laughs> walking inside. <laughs> Please, I've had enough of courting for today. Oh! <laughs> Have you ever heard of somebody named Captain Rail? <laughs> he's walking into this. 
<laughs> yeah, you you kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah fades to black out, and uh, you know we'll pick it up actually right up at the bar. Holy shit! See your maps. Also, I didn't know if we were leaving to go to the castle through the main gates this time, but look down 100% goes through the wall again. Yeah, it goes through, well, it is the shortest the distance. Wall. Literally everyone just went through the yeah, wall. Yeah, Tim's also went through the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Penelope went through the wall. I just imagine, like, one person in the town itself just, like, looking out and just being like, Huh. <laughs> it really is that bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so here we go. And uh ch -ch -ch -ch, Dragon Max here. Let's get the uh, let's get old pivot. My notes, I need my notes. My notes. My notes. Give me my notes, Max. Oh no. Uh ball pivot specifically. We need ball rizid. And uh so Max <laughs> Max kind of like uh, takes a seat like right in the middle of the bar. Um, you gonna take like a, a seat next to him? Where would you like to go? Yeah, I might as well take a seat next to him. <laughs> Perfect. Fuck it. Why not? I guess I'll be nice today. Camaraderie and all that, I guess. And uh, <laughs> Max is just like very, very gleeful, and he's just like, "Get us two of your finest ales, my good man." And he puts down some gold on the table. And uh, Belmont just goes, ree, ree, oh, 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 oh. and uh, <laughs> goes to uh, pour a couple of, of uh, strong ales and uh, puts one in front of you, Pivot, and puts one in front of Maxwell. Oh, okay, the cup isn't going to move, but there is one in front of Maxwell. And Maxwell's arm just stretches over, and we find out he's Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Max is uh, kind of just, like, bobbing his head, takes a sip of his beer, and uh, is just kind of, like, looking around, sees that nobody is in the tavern, and and says to Belmont, he's like, don't, uh, don't get much business here, do we? <clears throat> Not much nightlife in Bilms? Uh, there, what, oh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I can see that. Okay, hold on. I didn't mean it like that. Um, <laughs> it's a rather slow tonight. <laughs> Belmont just like looks over to you, Pivot. <laughs> With exactly the same expression as he has on right now. It is rather slow tonight, but there's been a lot happening. So... A little less business today is expected. That is true. That is true. I imagine things will likely pick up quite soon with the uh, freedom being restored and all. I hope so. But uh, I do have to tell you, I I have seen Petovia probably more than anybody else in the group, and uh, things are pretty bad. I know. There's... Uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's there's monsters everywhere. There's more chaos nights than my God. I than I could count on my fingers a hundred thousand times. I just, I, my goodness. And uh, as far as cities and civilizations, I think we'll find that there's really not much left. We were a bit of everything that was left. But enough of that. Uh, tell me about this lovely lady. Oh, dear God. Um, so, back when we started, when Mark woke up and all that, um, I had been intercepting communiques meant for Ciliate, particularly from one Captain Rell, who was in command of this city. Apparently, my charisma was enough for this rel to become infatuated with me over a long distance message so much so that when i showed up at the party in place of soliet herself <laughs> um she was even more excited than if soliet herself would have shown 
Yeesh. Uh, yeah, I guess she's probably pretty excited to see you after the long-distance relationship thing. I, uh... I, I don't. Oh. You, you know, Captain Ra, I just... Hmm. I just, I feel like I can't put my finger on it, but I have heard that name before. Was she a looker? No, she was the most terrible person you've probably ever looked at. Oh. Aside from fell goblins, of course. Yeesh. Woof. It was, uh, it was bad. Very bad. Well... I suppose at least uh, somebody was interested in you at the very least. Me, I, I gotta get my act together. I gotta, you know, I gotta wash up a bit. Uh, probably get rid of this scraggle on my face. Maybe, I mean, I, you think I should wear something other than the raincoat? I think you should do whatever makes you happiest. You see, that's exactly what I was thinking. But it seems like women avoid me like the plague for some reason. <laughs> and I just can't figure out why. I mean, like, I... you think I'm charming, right? In a way, you have a very energetic <laughs> personality. So it's it can be overwhelming, and your more scraggly appearance makes that come off in a negative light. But I think if you cleaned up, took care of yourself, I think you would be much more approachable. Yeah, yeah, I I think you might be right. I think maybe I should start thinking about the future. I just, uh, I've been thinking about the past and the present for just so long. It's, it's hard not to get discouraged and not really think that maybe tomorrow will even come, you know? But we're the hope bringers, are we not? Do something about this. Make it a world worth the living. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, friend. Took the words right out of my mouth. And he gives you a cheers. <laughs> the will return it. And um, Belmont is going to like walk over to the piano and start like he's gonna like crack his little paw knuckles. And then uh, jump up on the piano and start hopping around and playing a tune. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Hello, He's pretty good. <laughs> it's way better than I can do. Is he playing the piano rendition of Chemical Love? <laughs> Chemical Love! <laughs> you just hear a, a soft G. Soft. Ah. <laughs> it just starts having a PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> so pivot uh tell me what's up with you I, I i've never really gotten to talk to you yes we've also just been busy with our own individual goals and... well i'm a mage mm -hmm. i've been under Soliet's instruction for uh, 7 20 years now <laughs> yeah she was Crazy. Yes. It's... It's been a lot. You know, working as that witch's apprentice, you, uh... You do a lot of unsavory things. Surely, yeah. There's been, uh, plenty of times that she's taken me into a nightmare scape that, uh, I've seen some really good people die. It doesn't really get much easier. You definitely did. But I, um, I do have hope for the future. I do think that, I do think that Moth might be able to set things right. And that we might have a chance. Back, uh, when things were originally going down, I was thinking that I was going to just hightail town and, and move to Trell, because they just kind of don't get their noses stuck in anything. I thought maybe I'd just be safe there, but I, uh, I'm starting to rethink. If I'm being honest, Trell's not even a good place to be right now. Oh? 
maybe I'm a little biased on that, considering I'm a fellow Yeah, no, I, I understand. It's... I actually was born there. Grew up a few years there. Oh, were you? I believe so. How, uh... It's been about to me. You said they treated you pretty badly. Kavid kind of looks like a dark look crossing on his face. He's like, huh. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, I really do get spoiled with Vitovia. Things are uh, a bit different here, I guess. It was... Well... Bleak was putting it lightly. My mother and I eventually just had to flee. It was... That's sad, or get put on pitchforks and lit on fire. Jeez. I, uh... I can't say I blame them, though. I did light one of them on fire. <laughs> Probably well-deserved, honestly. Um, yeah. Very. Listen, I, uh... I know that people give you looks around town. I know that I've seen it firsthand. I'm more observant than people probably give me credit for, but uh, I just want to let you know that we always got your back, okay? I appreciate that, Rex. I, I need it. And perfect. It's gonna take a swig of his tail. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Uh, Max kind of like throws back the rest of his beer, and uh, mm. sets it back on the table and says, All right, you're really as convenient, so I'll, uh, I'll take one more and settle up. I don't want to be like my old man. <laughs> and uh, Belmont, like, runs back, grabs him one more beer and uh, places it on the table. And Max, like, looks over to me and says, he does, like, that thing where he kind of, like, lifts his eyebrow up uh, and, like, uh, tries to get himself as high as possible to see if uh, you've, you're done with your ale. It's like a little less than a quarter done. Like just a little quarter from the bottom. Um, uh, can you top him off? And uh, Belmont, normally, normally, since he doesn't get a ton of business, wouldn't do something along these lines, but he takes the beer and he tops it off and uh, doesn't charge you for the extra pint. And runs back to playing the piano. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. <sighs> Actually, I, I'm not really feeling drink of this beer. I, I kind of use it as an escape sometimes, I guess. I kind of. Mm -hmm reach uh, that certain point where my, my cheeks get fuzzy and uh, <laughs> it's kind of my limit. I don't really like getting past that point. I, uh, my old man was a bit of an alcoholic. He wasn't very good to you, huh? No, I uh, he didn't necessarily need the alcohol to give him a reason to beat my ass, but uh, yeah, he did anyways. But the alcohol definitely made it worse. And, uh... <laughs> you know, it's only in celebration that I end up drinking at this point. Well, oh, a few drinks among friends at the bar. Never a bad thing. Yeah. If it all kind of lift his mug a bit. Pivot, uh... <sighs> You do think we're going to be okay, right? There's a lot to do. And I'm not sure, honestly. I think we have a chance. And that's more than we've had for a long time. It's Ye just up to us to do the best we can. Of course. And um, we go to the 
Where is it? Where's Solia Castle here? Open up this bad boy. We really need to rename this. <laughs> they, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Returning to Solia Castle. <laughs> Oh boy, I can't wait to go back to Soliot's castle. Let's see. Let's get uh, let's get everybody. Yeah. Where their body? Oh, it's Boy, still just up there. I... <laughs> what? Wait, how do you? I love the fact that we all just keep going. All right, uh, we're done in this city. Let's go back to the you know, where all our trauma is uh, held and just I guess sleep. <laughs> hey, to be fair, Tim sees this place as a uh, enormous fixer upper. <laughs> Metal piece already here. That is true. Uh, let's get Thames. And today on House Flipper. <laughs> true. Um. Today on House Flipper, Pavid gets a cushion behind the fucking throne. <laughs> he finally gets a cushion behind the throne. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Just wait for the renovation arc. <laughs> As you um, enter into the castle, uh, you see that um, Marth is, is not really in the main hall, kind of no longer around. Uh, it seems that he's kind of put Penelope off to bed. Finally put her down for good. Hey, yo. <laughs> Didn't the look down felt that way. Oh, uh, anyways, Tim's is gonna do the customary check the forge, make sure everything is where it should be. I hand you my armor. Uh, Tim's will put it in uh, the repair pile. The repair pile is uh, whatever Tim throws it in front of the forge. <laughs> 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 yeah, you just toss it right in front. But uh, you do walk in. Everything seems like uh, exactly the way you left it. Okay. Uh, so I would say that uh, once putting the armor in the, in the quote-unquote pile, Demis will also take his own armor off and put it in said pile. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll uh, return... Head to back. the uh, good old throne room. Head back into the throne room, being ever so careful not to step inside the water. <laughs> hey, if he did, it's not the biggest issue. That is true. For, for them, it's not that big of an issue. Yeah, why do you think Pavid never crosses the bridges? Just stay <laughs> in the main hall and you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so look down. Did you want to do anything before you... Go off to bed. Good talk. <laughs> at this point, t at this point, Tim's is more than willing to outstare you. <laughs> and you'll probably lose. I have nothing. Do you? I need to speak with Marth, and I don't know if he is even here. I guess I could knock on this room door. I can too. That is true. You can do that as well. <laughs> You know what? I'll let you do it. Thank you. And I walk up and I knock on the door. These are my favorite moments. I love these so much. Just the, the complete awkward Thames look down moments where they just like have a silence for just like a minute straight just looking at one another. <laughs> oh god. So you're heading up to the uh, to the bedroom here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. So you you head up to the uh, bedroom, and indeed the uh, the door is closed. Uh, look down. I knock on the door. 
Uh, you hear a, a very quick reply from Mart Singh uh, to come in. I open the door. You open the door ever so slightly, and you, you see the door, <laughs> <and it's like, laughs> the door is behind the other door. <laughs> Another door. Uh, Thames, are you going in as well? Yeah, he'll go in. I imagine look down's knock kind of sounds like someone trying to like take the door off the hinges. So. <laughs> <I punch it>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, give, it gives Martha a little jolt. He says, "Oh, oh, like uh, look down, come in, of course." <laughs> How'd you know it was me? A hole in the window. Yes. Yep. It's a fixer upper, remember? So. I was going to mention something else, but now that I've seen this room, I should ask, since I do plan on making some modifications to this place whenever we get time, do you want me to repair your room? The floors are cracked, there's a hole in the window, the bathtub water is quite frankly awful. <laughs> mm, you know, this, um... This used to be my father's bedroom itself, and it is sad to see it in the state it is currently in, so I would be much appreciative. Mm, I must inform you that it would be lower on the priority, but I will do so. No, perfectly understandable. At your leisure, we could definitely use modifications to the castle. I will fix the window as soon as possible, however, if Alice can get in here... Uh, well, not, I wouldn't say anybody, but there is a risk of a lot. You know, I somehow don't mind it. And he kind of just, like, looks out into the, the night sky and uh, says, This is the first time in God knows how long that I've just gotten to sit back and look at the stars. You know you can look at the stars with a actual window there. True. But I get the full scope of them, just like this. Hmm. Uh, thing I came here for, we should rename the castle. Castle Soliet doesn't have a good ring to it. You're not wrong. Um, it would probably be good to not bring up any repressed memories for <clears throat> literally everybody in the castle. If, um, you know, through a slight name. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Hmm. How about... Hmm. I'm not very good with names. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Marth looks over to you, look down and says, What about you? I... Uh... Not good with names. How about Castle Potovia? Tim says with like a raised eyebrow. <laughs> Simple, but to the point. And uh, I can just imagine it. As people see the castle floating towards them, they say, Look. Potovi is on its way. I kind of like it. it. It's certainly better than Oh Look, Soli, it's on their way. Yeah. True. <laughs> I think Castle uh, Potovia works. Notably, Tem says Soli it uh, quieter than every other word because he's sending next to look down. <laughs> yeah, no, look down does look pensive every time you say the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just hear the neck crack. <laughs> Actually, you said Soliet's, oh, look, Soliet's coming. I uh, want to do an observation check. Yeah, yeah, give, give an observation check. I'm like looking at the dead body. Oh my goodness. Um, That's a 22. Again? You, yeah, you, you give like a just a dead glare to Soliet's dead body in the corner of the room. Um, and you, you do like a uh, just a quick aura read just to see <laughs> if she's still alive or not. And lo and behold, uh, she is dead as a doornail. The corpse is uh, getting older and older as the day goes.
goes by, or as the days go by. You probably are going to want to burn her corpse. Yeah, I was thinking about just tossing it out the window, but I suppose mm. just as anybody else, she probably does deserve a burial. No, she does not deserve a burial. She is a necromancer. Burn her corpse, please. <laughs> you have the forge. <laughs> you know what? Yes, yes, I do. In terms, we'll go pick up her corpse. <laughs> yeah, you grab the corpse, and it is like, ooh, just like very oddly crumbling in your hands as you like grabbing it. Tim just uh, closes his eyes, but he's been around this place for so long that he'll just try to memory it and <laughs> walk over to his forge. <laughs> yeah, you start like. You kind of, like, bump into the, the door, the unopened door, and then, like, turn ever so slightly and go down the one that's open. <laughs> and head off to the forge. I wish I read my notes. And we'll say, uh, and we'll, like, light the coals, and we'll just say, uh, isn't this an ironic way our history comes to an end so late? From beyond the grave, fuck you. <laughs> Beautiful. And you put the uh, the remains of the corpse inside the forge, and you just feel a, a breath of fresh air as um, the ashes slowly rise up into the atmosphere and dissipate. Tim starts coughing. <laughs> 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 it was fucking solely in my lungs. <laughs> And we'll just walk back. Come silly ems. <laughs> you uh you kind of walk back and uh if you open you also you like uh, kind of go through the door. Yeah, go ahead. Before he comes back, mm -hmm. um look down would just say idea. Yeah, what's up? Castle Stippins. Castle Stippens. What's um what's Stippens? Might I ask? Oh Man here years ago Holds Father What did, what did you say in the last word? Father. Ah. Except with a question mark, because he actually doesn't know. <laughs> or remember. <clears throat> Their name. Was you, you remember a man that was here? By the name of Stippens, yes. Rudolph was his name. I never... Bet. How um, long ago was this? Look down. Can I actually remember the number? Uh, no, it just feels like a long, well, long I was time told the ago. number. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, it was... I was um, like 50 yeah, it was, years ago or something? It was, like it was around 50 years ago. Yeah. Yep. I... They said... Around 50 years. They said? And as uh, he says they, Thames walks through the door. Uh, Thames is lightly dusted, uh, <laughs> and it looks rather perturbed, but is back. Oh, welcome back. Did you, um... And, uh, like, Marth kind of, like... Looks out the window, and he does have, like, a pretty good view of, like, your, um, just, like, area in general. And he does see that, uh, there's, there's quite a few particles kind of floating in the sky. <laughs> and he goes, ah, um, maybe I do need a window. <laughs> Tim just narrows his eyes a little. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yo, well, let's, um, was there anything else that you two needed this evening? 
Uh, where is Penelope? She's resting in the cafeteria. Hmm. Well, the first thing that I plan on doing, or one of the first, is I plan on building rooms for everyone here. As I don't think Sully had had any consideration for anyone that wasn't her. No, truly, she really must not have. It seems like there was not even any in-housing for the soldiers themselves. Mm, and with, uh, with no grounds, per se, for us to permanently be at, uh, let's just say this castle is going to get very large. Surely. Anyways, I have to go convince a bunch of people that likely do not know masonry in the slightest how to go build a wall tomorrow. So I'm going to go get some rest. Well, I hope you have a good evening. Thank you for everything again. Likewise. You head off. You heading back into your uh, room? Yep. <laughs> into, your, into your cot to get back on your back eventually. It keeps happening. What's happening to me? <laughs> and uh, as Marth hears like your footsteps uh, disappear into the distance, he approaches you a little bit closer, look down, and says, You were talking about they. Yes. Who is they, if you don't mind me asking? My only friend from here. I see. Um, I don't believe there was... Uh, I don't believe there was anybody else here looked down. Who... Mm -hmm. Comes and goes as he wants. Who is this man? Look down. Do I feel any notion to not say his name? I have to ask that. Um, you do feel like an odd feeling in the pit of your stomach. You don't necessarily know why. Um, Serviad Daniels doesn't uh, come out to actually stop you from saying his name necessarily, um, but you do feel a bit conflicted. I uh, look down visibly struggles are you tired look down do you need rest mm. not really hmm. well I just want you to know and he kind of, like, is trying to just break the silence ever so slightly. He, he walks up to you and, and places his hand on your shoulder and says, You can trust me with whatever it is that you need to tell me. I read his aura. You read Mart's aura. And it is very, very calm, gentle, and genuine. His name is Serviad Daniels. And a very brief pause hushes throughout the room and Marth kind of 
his his brows start to furrow as he starts clearly pacing through his mind. And after a second of thinking, he looks back up and simply says, Well, I don't believe I've met him before. Can't say that I've even heard the name. Um, but he is an ally, this Serviette Daniels? He said when you first came you seemed good which is why I'm here well I can assure you that yes I I, you know, I do make mistakes. I do believe that everybody makes mistakes and everybody does wrong. But at the end of the day, I think that we are truly doing the right thing. We have to also believe that at some point that maybe Mechalite isn't entirely doing this for no reason either. I, I just need to know why. I'd we like to just... Sorry, go ahead. Do good. Yes. Why I feel nothing. Well, quite simply, look down. And he kind of just uh, takes a seat on the ground and starts to contemplate a little bit and says, we've all had quite a bit of our lives stripped away from us. Before I was put to sleep, I was only 18 years old. I was still so young and I had a life ahead of me. I, I, I wanted to serve in the military. I wanted to do great things and protect Petovia with everything that I had. And when I was put asleep, I... <laughs> I awoke and I'm an old man. My life gone for the most part. Just nothing. A large chunk of my entire life gone. And I feel like that's happened to a lot of us. The sad part looked down as I don't even know if the memories that I do have left are um, even ones that I've remembered or something soul yet put in my head. <laughs> but I have to believe in the conviction that I have, the determination for a better future for Petovia. I have to believe that that's enough. I think you just need to find something that gives you conviction as well. Something that is going to make you feel purpose. I think you'll find it. I hope my... And he points to his head. can't remember. You can't remember either. No. And what of this Serviad? Does he remember? Some. Can't remember. And he takes off his shirt because he knows that you've seen it. This. And, and... I don't know if the lights, the words are lit up again, but... Yes. Yes, indeed, they are. Uh, the lights uh, just clearly across your chest as as just brightly as, as the sun itself uh, start kind of glowing and emanating from your chest. And... 
Marth looks up to you and says, Are you sure you don't know who that man is? Yes. Hmm. Well, uh, what I can tell you is that he was the greatest man that I ever knew. I don't know why you have it on your chest, and... Quite frankly, I wish I could help you look down, but... I assure you that we will find the answers together. I promise you that. Why? Why what? Does... It... Light... Only... With you... And... Serviad. Hmm. Confused. I suppose we can have Pivot take a look at it? Hmm. Oh. Okay. And, uh, Marth is gonna stand up and just very briefly put his hand on your shoulder and say, I do have one other way that I, I, uh, I feel like I could help you find it out. Spell. The, um, the book Hi, of uh, Naturna. I could put you under and look into your heart, look into your memories and see if perhaps we could find out why. You good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to yell at my other roommate. <laughs> it's okay. Break the tension. Break the tension. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. Well, uh, can you repeat what you said? Um, you said uh, that he can put you under with the Book of Naturna to uh, find out why. To find the answers that you seek and to look into your heart. He said so very, almost begrudgingly. Whatever you think will work. Thank you. But I want it to be when you want. I don't want this to be something that I make a decision for you. When you feel it appropriate, if you feel it appropriate, we'll go forward with it, okay? Okay. And uh, Marth is going to, once again, just kind of walk over to the window and look up at the stars and uh, say to you, I think it's time we all settled in for the night, got some rest. This good does hurt less, and then I leave. Oh. Uh -huh. And uh, he sees that you leave. Do you shut the door behind you? Yes. As the door kind of shuts behind him, he sighs and um, just kind of like grips onto his fist and reluctantly goes over to bed and lays down and starts staring at the ceiling. And um, is there anything else you would like to do, Look Down? Uh, I actually just kind of sit in the water since they didn't turn the water pumps off. Mm. Uh, except in front of Tem's room because that's the best place to be always. <laughs> <laughs> Just kicking your feet in the, in the water. 
<laughs> Tim's just gonna be up bright and early because he got <laughs> stuff to do. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna like knock on the door or anything like that. I'm just gonna um, sit by the water, probably go in for a little bit. Understandable. Yeah, right. So it's they, a uh, better environment than the dungeons. <laughs> Well, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if there was, like, a hot tub or anything like that, like, it's, like, the best version that we have right now. So, um, Lookdown's just gonna stare in the water, think about things. And as you um, are kind of sitting in the water, Lookdown, uh, Serbia does, uh, kind of, like, come out and show his face, and he sits down next to you and says, I think you... Made the right decision, champ. I, I think it was about time. Time that we both figured out for ourselves what's happening, why it's happening, and our place in the world. I am not going to lie. I am a little scared. Which is not something I've felt in a long time. Yeah, me too. I um, I have my reservations about the prince. He seems to um, not have everything together himself. It seems conflicted. But he himself seemed to speak the truth. In his honest word, I don't know whether to go forward with what he's suggesting or not, but I think we'll know soon enough. If it somehow can help now, I suppose it's worth it. I don't want to see. And I look back at Thames' door. Anyone go down again? Neither do I. And knowing that I'm helpless to do anything about it is aggravating. Yeah, I'm share the feeling. And um, Serbia Daniels is going to take a quick dip in the water and uh, sit back up. And <laughs> since he's uh, not necessarily a regular just human being like yourself, he kind of just immediately dries him up. <laughs> And says, I guess we should probably call it a night. I suppose. <clears throat> and uh, are you thinking exactly what he's thinking? <laughs> Jump off the waterfall? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't know about that one. <laughs> he kind of just, uh, he lays his head down on the tile, uh, kind of like right next to you here, and uh, falls asleep. <laughs> I um I lay back with my legs dangling like where the, like the knees bend mm. just hanging off the side and then I just lay back Good night. And I close my eyes until I fall asleep. And um would you all like to pivot um you kind of finished up over at the bar over here with Mr. Maxwell himself. I got to have a real talk with Maxwell. Just be sad. <laughs> real sad boy hours. That's what Max is good for. <laughs> real one. Max is the closest thing we have to anybody that's happy and he's just like, you know, also sad a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. He tries to keep happy. In more ways than one. Yeah, that's true. 
Vid has been as optimistic as he possibly could be in this conversation. <laughs> you did give Max more hope than uh, realistically he had before, so that is good. You gave him a little bit of a pep talk, which he definitely needed. And um, Max glow up? <laughs> he's going to have the real glow up. Max just grows it out into a Fu Manchu. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! Wait. <laughs> I, I I said that I needed a change. Um, as long as he takes care of it, I guess it's okay. That's true. It doesn't turn into a wild beast. And uh, as Max kind of finishes up his beer, he he looks back to um, Belmont and says, "Cool if I uh, I crash upstairs. I don't feel like uh, walking all the way back to the castle." And Belmont goes woo, 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 very happily and uh, uh, just gives him, like, words of affirmation that he can go upstairs and uh, sleep up there. Thanks, bud. the b, &B though. <laughs> I don't think Max ever wants that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Max is traumatized. And uh, he, he starts heading away and then turns around and says, Thanks for the conversation. I, uh, I definitely... Definitely needed that. It's a pleasure talking with you, Max. Rest well. You did well today. Sheesh! Compliments everywhere we go. <laughs> <laughs> he heads upstairs. Oh, man. And uh, what would you like to do, Pivot? Uh, how much is it for ales here? It is. Give me one second. It is. Where did I run it down? It's not very expensive. I think it's like five gold for uh, like a pint. So Pavid will leave five gold on the counter to cover the top up. And two extras to tip. Drain the rest of his ale, and uh, grab a seat by the uh, the table on the left there, and just start pulling out the notes he got from the archbishop. Perfect. You start to uh, pull out the notes from the archbishop, and uh, it takes a, a little while for you to kind of um, sort them. But uh, sort them though you do. Some of them are kind of. Um, illegible. Uh, some of them kind of got a little bit damaged, but for the most part, you really can uh, kind of put together where he started his documents and uh, where he ended them. And most everything is completely salvaged. Mm. And you kind of um, start on the first page and you read, Animals are delicate creatures. They are strong by nature, but weak in their one-track mindedness. This is the major distinction between animals and a creature with a soul. Creatures with a soul seem to have a greater depth of understanding. They are able to adapt and form a new basis for what they deem right and wrong. They can seemingly make greater strides through mental obstacles and even feel deeper and more in-depth emotions such as love and hate. Now, I don't believe an animal could ever develop a soul, and I don't wish to play as a false god. Glory to the unknown god of chaos and the unwavering trust he places in me for my research. I will not extinguish... The thousands of bright fires that stand in my way to reach my goal. Between the cracks and flashes of their light hold the wherewithal to guide my shadow to its destination. Science has failed humanity. They turn a blind eye to the gift the gods bestowed on them. And through that ignorance they will find only more ignorance. I say let them wallow in their infectious obsessions. I will prove things that would only be seen as magic in their eyes. The unknown god of chaos chose me. I used to live a normal life, 
a simple life of a fisherman who worked and provided for his family under the grace and tutelage of my father. We lived a modest life and never once were in need. By all means, I should have been happy, but I craved greater purpose. Was my fate truly to live as a humble fisherman for the rest of my life? I prayed endlessly for a greater meaning to my life, a sign. And then it came. One morning, I woke early to get a head start in the U-10 River. Typically, the earlier you arrived at the river, the less traffic there will be. The bigger fish hated things that made bigger splashes than them, and therefore the big prey could be found when they were more likely to be alone. There was a soft, low-lying fog skimming across the coast of the water. It made it impossible to see far into it. However, that didn't stop me from catching a glimpse from what now I can consider destiny itself. A small, red glow slowly flowed down the river. Its luminescence was as rich as blood and as seductive as a fairy's song. I began walking through the water on the banks. I felt my will weaken further with each step. Hey. And, uh, Pivot, you go to read further into the document but uh, you are so physically exhausted from your long day that you pass out on top of the pages. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have you all gain the benefits of a nice long rest. Um, can Tim's wake up like at like four or five ish to get the crafting stuff he needs to get done before he goes wall fixing? Um, yeah. It'd, it'd be part of his long rest. Yeah, you, you definitely, um, you wouldn't gain the benefits of the long rest if you kind of slept for only, uh, it was probably like maybe, uh, what time did you say you were going to wake up? Like four or five? Uh, he'd want to get up with enough time just to repair and craft one thing. And then oh, yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, so you probably slept in and around the ballpark of like three hours. Um, you guys kind of finished up with everything, probably in around like two in the morning, and uh, so yeah, you kind of uh, wake up bright and early. Thames, you feel a bit. Uh, here, let me open up the castle. You feel uh, a bit groggy, and you kind of wake up on your uh, your back again on your shell, but you are indeed determined to get up and be productive for the day. And so you kind of uh, roll back and forth and slowly but surely get uh, onto your feet. We love determining our self-worth by how much we are able to be productive. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tim's will get up and repair the things in from that he like threw in front of the forge because he was super tired. Couldn't you, like, make a pulley system that, like, you can pull on to, like, make the bed go sideways to tip you back over? Tim's could, <laughs> but... Are he, you he talking could. like... <laughs> oh my god, wait, what is the movie? The claymation movie? Oh my god. Um, where they have the bed that tips them down into their pants, and then they have, like, the buttered oh, toast. Oh. Like, what What yes. is the name of the movie? Oh, fuck. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh my god, I love that so much. That's so funny. Tim's in character could definitely do that. Out of character, Michael finds his predicament very funny. So... <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So, Tim's will repair the aluminum armor and the steel armor, and he would like to make the, uh, the cane. Perfect. You, uh, um... Oh, good. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, I don't think uh, the materials were said to craft that. So would you say like two hardwood, two steel? Yeah, I would say probably about like two hardwood, two steel in and around that ballpark. Okay. Equal mixable. Uh, Thames has the hardwood and steel. 
think just enough hardwood and more than enough steel. I believe so, at least. Yeah, no, I would say that you you would have the materials for it, um, especially especially like wood at this interval. Uh, like you definitely were more than uh, you had like more than enough in terms of just like wood, hardwood, uh, simple materials like you know uh, like aluminum, copper, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the day, Tim's is going to be hoarding wood and stone. <laughs> Finding every little pebble he can get. <laughs> yep. Yes, Wallace and Grummet. Thank you, Candy. Oh my god, that was going to bother me so badly. Um, but yes, um, quite a few um, hours pass, and you do repair the armor, and you um, do get to, to work on the cane and uh, finish it in probably the span of, uh, I would say, like three hours. Okay, uh, Timson immediately heads over to the uh, wall as he did summon them there. Head over to, oh, oh, got you, yes. You, uh, you open up your door and you see, <laughs> look down, um, kind of just sleeping right in front of your door. Mm. How's it uh, going? Tims will let him sleep as, look down. Probably needs it, uh, and we'll just, uh, step over. <laughs> um, Thames, you go to step right over, look down, and look down. Does this wake you up? I can't Im I don't... I I'm having a hard time with it, because I assume he's kind of a light sleeper, but also has been put through so much shit that it probably, like, doesn't bother him. That's true. You also had a very long day yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll leave it up to you because I can think of like hearing like he's sleeping, and then all of a sudden hears like the jail, the cell doors open. Sure. And I sure. assume that that wakes him up. I would say this time it it probably like wakes you up a little bit, but you uh, just kind of close your eyes and fall back asleep as he just kind of like walks over you and heads out of the uh, the <laughs> castle itself. I just say hi. Uh, as he's stepping over you, uh, he'll look down, huh, and say, uh, hello, and just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> and, he walks uh, with a cane now. Beautiful. I love it. Awesome. And you head into town. <laughs> Let me open up the buildings here. Walk into town. Hmm. And there are already quite a few people gathered up on the wall here. Just kind of waiting. Uh, it consists of actually quite a few children. <laughs> As the children are, are more than eager to kind of um, help out with everything. And the mother has rallied everybody as well as let me grab some of the town's folks here. Lots of kids. Tim's definitely feels not very comfy about that, but <laughs> that, that's what he has to work with. And uh, you do see None other than Bavelli here to help out as well. <laughs> Such a helpful man. Yeah, you kind of, uh, you kind of like walk down through the uh, the fields hmm. and see all these people kind of gathered up to the wall, and uh, they like all just are talking amongst each other until they see you and stop uh, their conversation and just look over to you. Tennis will kind of do that, like, that wide stance, and we'll put, like, both hands on the top of the cane. And, uh, we'll, uh, direct the kids to put the stone into, uh, manageable piles. And any one that is not a child and is physically capable of lifting, uh, for them to, uh, start moving bricks, and he'll put the mortar down. Perfect. Um, the, the kids slowly but surely 
uh, grab as much uh, rubble as they can. Some of like the bigger uh, stones, like two of them come along and pick it up and uh, bring it along. But they do start kind of uh, stacking it in piles off to the side here. Until direct Bavelli to get some stone from a quarry or anywhere there where there's stone because there's not going to be enough stone to fully repair the wall as Tim's took some earlier. Oh, I know just the place. And I get a good deal, too. <laughs> and he heads into uh, town. Oh, Tim's sorry. will give him like 50 gold to buy it. For me? And if, you, if you find anything more uh, for stone wise, uh, get this much worth of it. I will need it for uh, projects. I will find the best deal in town. You have my word. Thank you. And he heads into town. And uh, yes, they continue dragging rocks out of the way here. And um, from what you can see, Thames, it is, it is kind of a slow, um, hopeful display. But as you look amongst the inhabitants of the city... Most of them are either incredibly young uh, women uh, of just like middle age or uh, very old. It does not seem like they have a lot here in terms of um, just muscle. Yeah, that's why he was, he just kind of wants them to like bring it in place and he'll put down the mortar and like get things fully in place. He's essentially designed or trying to get them to do a human conveyor belts, but without, <laughs> uh, without directly saying that. Nope, perfectly understandable. And uh, as Bavelli comes back, let's see. So you gave him 50 gold, right? Yep. Let's see. How much can you get for it here? If I remember, stone is relatively expensive. He did get a discount. Um, a pretty big discount. Um, he comes with kind of enough to actually, he comes in with enough for the wall because that's, that's on the city. They're, they're funding the, uh, the wall itself. Um, but he comes with 10 slabs of kind of stone being carried to you and, uh, and says, where would you like? Just set it uh, 50 feet or so over there, if possible. Now tell me, where did you get that? I managed to visit them. Oh, it's, it's right in town. Very, very uh, hard to miss. The, the, the roof itself is shaped like a ham. Perhaps they are my kind of people after all. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever you do, don't go to that one schmuck who runs the Emporium. I tell you what, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, he goes and uh, brings it off to the side and sets it down for you. And is the conveyor belt relatively effective? Imagine Thames would have brought his own, like, mortar <laughs> and whatnot. He can, he can just, like, make. It's essentially just grout and water. Yeah, I was going to say, um, with, with like, the residents, too, they, they did, like, a pretty good job at, um, you know, just following orders in general, getting everything cleared out and getting everything ready, um, and are, like, more than willing to kind of pitch in to help you set everything into place. Okay. Would that be, like, a check? I imagine it would be Thames having to successfully lead them more so than Thames' own craftsmanship. Oh yeah, no, for sure. I would uh I would give like a um a persuasion. Just give me a persuasion. Okay. I almost opened up my old old sheet. Josh blowing the dice for me. What do you need? You need to blow <laughs> my roll 20 for me. <laughs> you didn't see it, but he definitely blew. Yeah. Oh, did it not pick up? <laughs> no. no. 
Oh. I just saw you like lean down to the. <laughs> the I was trying to make it itself. so it wasn't like I was blowing into a mic to make it ear shattering awful for people. That's perfectly understandable. I rolled a sixteen plus one. Uh, sixteen plus one. So, um, you you give like the orders pretty concisely to everybody, and they're already pretty enthusiastic about helping you out. Um, after the speech last night, they were pretty revved up, and uh, were really willing to put in the proper work to get their city back up and running. And they know that this is more important than really anything else is getting just a solid defensive wall. Um, intact. So you do give them uh, pretty good direct orders and um, you all kind of finish up the project uh, within a, a pretty good time period like two and a half, three hours. I did want to say I was going to try and show up at some point. Yeah, yeah. And I would say Lookdown probably shows up maybe like an hour later as he doesn't really sleep all that much. Um, and he would lend a hand to you as well, which significantly would increase the speed of the project. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say like within like maybe about two hours, you would get the uh, everything kind of set up. Some could say without look down, they were as slow as a turtle. And um, they're saved. As you finish up for the um, kind of finish up the the final touches, Marth <laughs> Marth ends up showing up and uh, seeing the product of you finishing up this wall here. Let me actually extend the wall to make it look like it's uh completed. How many children were lost in inside of the wall <laughs> during the How many process? women? How many women and children did it take? Kim's actually used the uh, the mortar, which was the blood of the children, to put it together. Yes. Yeah, it kind of died um, without me really understanding why, because it is plugged in. So I'm not really sure why it did that. Let's see if it's actually charged up at all. Um. And we are. It's fuck me, that's why. It's it's gonna die soon, but. You know what? For the time being, it's there. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate it. You can always put a placeholder Jeb there if you want. Put a little Jeb bush. <laughs> that is a good idea. Maybe I might have to do it if it dies again. <laughs> um, but Marth, like, uh, sees the, the completion of the wall and just gets a big smile on his face as he sees, like, the, the townspeople <laughs> kind of <laughs> chattering with you. Um... And just very enthusiastically talking to like look down as well, and just be like, "Oh, thank you so much for your work, young man." You're welcome. You're really impressive with the amount that you can lift up. Back in my day, I, <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I could. Lift up just as much as well. I'd say maybe even more. I could bench 450 in my good days. <laughs> Back when my knees were still good, of course. What? Wrong with knees. Oh, it's just it comes with old <laughs> age. Your knees don't hurt you. Everything does. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, that's a bit edgy for my taste. <laughs> and, uh, he just kind of, like, silently turns and just looks at the wall with everybody else. As I just awkwardly stand there staring at him still. <laughs> the rubble's still there. <laughs> The rubble, did you end up, uh, did you want the rubble with you? There's there's probably some good material within it. Uh, any rubble that wasn't used to repair the wall, he'll take, but he'll try to make the wall as sturdy in that spot as it is everywhere else. Right, right. Let me clear out this rubble here. I'm going to give you some material uh, towards the later end as well, once we're finished up. 
bug, bug. Tim's also going to purchase some. <clears throat> and, uh, Marth kind of just, like, looks around to see if anybody else from the, uh, team is here. He said, where, where is Pivot and Max? Alice? No. Uh, Alice <laughs> said that she would leave at the palace. And I believe Max and Pivot are at Belmont's. Oh. I didn't know Pivot to be uh, much of a partier himself. <laughs> mm, who knows? And, like, uh, it's kind of like this point where uh, Tim's will, like, begin, like, shaking people's hands, and then afterwards, like, wipe it on his. Uh, smock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as if not to, uh, get, especially with the kids, just all the germs. Yeah, it's like, we love botulism and everything else. <laughs> and, uh, they head in through the main gates to the, uh, city itself. After the, uh, are done shaking your hands and saying their goodbyes. And thanking you for everything that you've done. Dunk! <laughs> oh my! I'm such a silly little slur. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mart says, well, we have the rest of the day. Is there anything you'd like to do in Bilms? Mm, purchase materials for uh, future renovations. Sure, sure. Um, I think that there's a couple of places right in town that we can look at. Also, do you like the cane? Oh! I, uh... I actually hadn't noticed. It, it's rather fashionable, though. Looks really good. Hmm. That's not the point. You know, like, press the switch on it. <laughs> and so as you, as you press the switch on the cane, um, several just, uh, bladed, uh, just, um, like, kind of knives just dart out from the sides of the cane. And as you, like, press it back down to the ground, it, it flips right back into the cane. And that is the point of it. Ah. The several points, you might say. <laughs> A good point, indeed. I, um... You are certainly very creative. I can make you one, too. I mean, after all, I think all of us, except for probably... Alice would look odd with a wouldn't look very odd with a cane. Bro, just uh, the old man squad rolling it with the canes. I actually kind of love it. Boomer gang, boomer gang. <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> You know, I wouldn't be entirely opposed to that, but um I don't know how the people would look at me if I walked around with a cane per se. Do you think that they would think of me differently? They can just make it look extra royal, and then you would look like every other predecessor Petovian. Mm, yeah, throw a little extra, uh, throw a little extra, you know, uh, lavish gold on top, make it be really fit in with the rest of the royal poshness. Mm, if you're providing the gold, I certainly can. <laughs> uh, maybe we could squeeze it out of Max and. <laughs> <laughs> And he kind of starts walking towards, like, the front gate and going towards the town. Yep, and Tim's will follow. <clears throat> uh, look down, what would you like to do? <clears throat> you got the whole, the whole town. You still have a dead body outside. <laughs> <laughs> they all walked past it. Yeah, oh, they, they all walked past it, bro. <laughs> I mean, I guess it wouldn't matter now. Um... After that guy, I guess. They probably just like a casualty of war. I don't. He probably just kind of stands around. Doesn't really have a direction to go or he wants to go, so. Probably just kind of sit in the grass. <laughs> sit in the grass, perfect. Um. And. As these two head into uh, town here, um, 
mm. Bavelli kind of just like approaches you. He goes, oh, um, did you want to uh, do anything? Hmm. What do you like to do for fun? I just kind of look at him. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you want to enjoy the nature itself and uh, find a good, I know a very special place that you can rest your romper on. <laughs> what do you say? I stand up. Oh, okay. And he does a quick little spin and says, oh, follow me! I follow what is probably going to get me killed. <laughs> he brings you um, through the gates and into the <laughs> town itself. And um, he brings you over to the park here. He says, this is the best place in Bims itself. You have to believe me. It's uh, a little, a little known secret. I threw a man off the wall here. You? That is a probably not something you want to confess to. <laughs> <laughs> was bad man. Oh, I was going to ask if it was consensual, but uh, yeah, I suppose if he's a bad man, then uh, he, uh. he deserved to have the fall. Cons. Cons. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> uh, what? I'm sorry? <laughs> I just stare at him. Right, right. Uh, well, uh, you know, I think this will make you feel better. Throwing people off of walls, it's hard work. You need to enjoy a nice sit every once in a while. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I caught it at the beginning, and I caught it now, you motherfucker. <laughs> and lo and behold, you kind of approach this uh, oddly placed stone just sitting in the middle of the park, and uh, you can't read what it says. Um... But it does indeed say on the sign, enjoy a scent. <laughs> what about the bodies that are buried under the park, King? There are no bodies under the bed of the park. Absolutely not. Hmm. I, I think I believe you. <laughs> I sit on the rock. You... Go to sit on the rock and give me an observation check. You know what this dies when it went by me so far. Fuck you. Uh, eight. Um, you don't really notice anything, but you do feel good. And and Bavelli like very eagerly like <laughs> shakes his head up and down. He's like, yes, yes. What did you think? Indeed, it is a very nice, very nice rock. I just kind of look around. <laughs> not really knowing why I have to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Bavelli just kind of like, kind of like turns around and is just like, well, I, um, I got business to do. How is the way the how, you know how is the uh, how has the weapon been treating you? Good. Pros. Person. Mmm. Yes, it is a special thing from an ice dragon. Very, very rare, but I did find it along my ways. Oh, I told you, it's a nice dragon. <laughs> what? 
ice dragon. Oh, well, I can't say that I really got close enough to uh, understand his name, but... <laughs> Just completely not understanding what you're trying I, to yeah, convey to him. More and more confused. <laughs> and uh, he says, "Well, I I'm glad that you're enjoying it. For what it's worth, my wares being used for good is is good enough for me. And as long as the paycheck is there, then I'm happy to assist. I'll be seeing you in the future." He starts to walk away. Is the uh, map in day mode? Yes. It is indeed in day mode. Uh, there we go. Uh, I was about to say, it's looking gloomy today. <laughs> it was still a little it's bit early in the morning. Yeah, I had to, I had to change the time. Um, but Martha kind of starts bringing you through town and, and says, uh, what specifically where is it that we were looking for? I need stone, wood, mattresses, glass, decorations, uh, hmm. <laughs> He's, like, trying to keep it on his hand. <laughs> uh, I believe that is it. Right, okay, well, um, I... Oh, and steel. Steel, okay. Um, I, I want to say that most of all these things you could probably find at the store here. And he kind of, uh, points to this... Very hammer-looking rooftop. It looks like the building is itself is shaped like a hammer. Yeah, yeah. The entire building, like the the little like chimney the top here. This is a little baby handle. Yep. <laughs> it's a little mini Thor hammer. And you outside of it, like you have a really long handicap ramp. Yeah, I really should have. It would have actually just been perfect, just all the way out. And Tim's will walk in. Perfect. And you go to uh, walk in, and Mart's like, I'll, I'll go check on um, Pivot and Max to make sure they're getting on okay. Please do. Especially Pivot. Will do. Especially Pivot. <laughs> and uh, he disappears, and um, Thames, they offer in this store, this is uh, Hammerall's uh, Materials and More, they offer stone, a, a stone cutting pickaxe, brick, uh, cords of wood, aluminum, silver, iron, uh, sheets of glass, and leather scraps. So, to make everything that I sent you, how much would I have to buy? Let's see. Like just gold value wise. Just keep it simple to not take up too much time. Let me open up. Specifically for all of like the um, the stuff that you want to do inside the castle, you mean? Yep. Okay. I would say gold wise, you already have a decent amount of stone that you just got. I would say maybe since it's not Bavelli coming here, it's you. You're not gonna get as good of a discount, unfortunately. Um, but I do get a discount. You do get a discount though. Yeah, they they are giving you a discount on everything that's in the uh, the city right now. So I would say it's probably about um, stone wise a hundred, and you need glass, which is yep, you need glass and wood and uh, steel. The glass is going to be two hundred, so it'd be three hundred. Um, okay. He does not sell any steel. Eh, I guess Tim says enough. Hopefully. And what was what was the other things that you needed? Sorry. Wood. And wood, I would say another 50 gold, so uh, 350. Okay. Um, but they have anything to like make beds out of? Or if uh, not, beds themselves? They don't really have much in the way of, you know, materials to make beds. I'm sure you could probably... Uh, obviously, you would have like the wood um, for like the frame and stuff. But um, other than that, you would probably have to find things. Bro, I'll okay. take a hide bed roll at this point. I was gonna say there there were um, some bed rolls and stuff in uh, if you remember the the library itself, as well as like cushions and stuff. 
as well as the uh, the mansion itself. They did have <laughs> quite a, a lot of furniture there. Could Tim try to like find a farmer and like just buy feathers? Uh sure, sure. Oh, he knew would pay the the man the three fifty. Perfect. You give the man the three fifty. He says, "Oh, great! You're so much. This is this is the most business I've seen in a long time." <laughs> mm, it is much needed. Thank you. And uh, you kind of head down here, and uh, this person definitely uh, kind of you know keeps chickens, keeps a little bit of livestock. And um, he would be more than willing to give you as much feathers as you kind of needed for uh, stuffing veds for probably like, um, mm. I mean, he's he's a, he's a pretty simple farmer. He'd probably give it to you for 30 gold. Okay. Does he have like, it's a weird ask, does he have like any burlap or any, um, yeah, like fabric? Uh, he definitely has burlap. Um, as far as fabric, not really. Um, he does have, like, some sheep that he kind of, like, has, like, wool. Tim's will take the wool. He can loom it later. Okay, perfect. We'll uh, do, like, just, like, another 20 gold. Okay, so 50 total. Yep, 50 gold altogether. He'll get that. Uh, and, like, just for mixed decorations here and there, uh, like, very basic. Tim's is not extravagant. Uh, how much would that be? Like, we're talking, like, plants. <laughs> oh, you're looking for, for, like, plants, various things? To, like, put in people's rooms. You are going to want to head all the way down here. <laughs> Back to oh, this boy. man. <laughs> it's a shopping episode. Back hey. over to this man. And, uh, he's just kind of, like... Very jealously, like, watching you go, like, store to store without stopping by his emporium. And he's like, he sees you finally approaching, and he's like, oh, <laughs> hello there, um. I need your plants. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, uh, what kind of plants are we looking for? The ones that look nice. Sheesh. Yes, well, uh. Good morning to you, too. <laughs> that takes everything extremely personally now. And he kind of, like, shuffles around and uh, comes out with uh, a couple of, like, pretty pretty decent potted plants. You can tell that they definitely have not gotten enough water. Um, but, like, they, they are, like, pretty nice to look at. I will take them. Sure, sure. You know what? I'll give it to you for better a price than any of these other businessmen could. I'll give it to you for, uh, how do you say, uh, 20 gold, Sam? <laughs> mm, I think that almost everyone I've met has called you a crook, and I will give you 10 gold for them. <laughs> are you saying this wow. um, in a persuasive way, or are you saying it in an intimidating way? Intimidating. Okay, give it. Give me the intimidation check with advantage because this man has already been rattled by your teammates. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> Why do you keep bullying this guy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, roll a 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 goodness gracious. I mean, just... Oh, what is... His chivalry is dead by the queen. <laughs> and he says, What queen? We have a king. Oh, yeah, so, fuck it. Whatever. Right. Take, take, take it for ten gold. Just don't come back. <laughs> He'll give ten gold. <laughs> Perfect. Pleasure doing business. And we'll take the points and go. And there is um, one more just a specific shop that you kind of catch out in general over uh, this way. Um, it looks like just like this nice, um, like, young lady uh, selling various, like, um, like, brews and potions, ointments, various things. Would she sell cooking materials? Like, cook, like, pots, pans? Yep. Okay, then he'll buy all that, too. Perfect. Uh, just for, like, another, um, 20 gold altogether. Uh, well, would Tim's have to make the, like, an oven or stove himself? Or I should say, like, a small, like, uh, one of those, like, iron stoves. 
I would say, uh, if you, I would say that you'd probably have to make it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Then, Thames would pay up and bring it on back. Perfect. You're yeah, heading having yeah. like three cards that he's pulling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just pulling a gigantic amount of cards back through like the long way out of builds. And you exit, and we open back up into the library. Sorry, not the library. Into the, uh... Into the inn. There we go. Save it all! Poor look down. Poor look down literally did just get <laughs> dropped off at the park. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't come back. And, um... Let's see, where's Marthy boy? Marthy boy. Marthy boy. Marth um, walks through the, the doors here and sees clearly that you've kind of had a long night um, as you are just kind of still sleeping on the table. And Belmont is just like standing on his uh, his bar and he just goes like... <laughs> just kind of like looking at you, Pivot, not really understanding why you didn't go upstairs. And, uh, Mart's like, thank you. I, I appreciate you letting us stay here for the night. It was a big help. And, uh, he kind of, like, approaches you, Pivot, and, uh, like, sits down. And, uh, he notices that you don't necessarily wake up just right away. And so he's, he's, like, Pivot. Pivot, um, I uh, don't know if you really wanted to do anything with your day, but um, <laughs> you you're more than welcome to rest if you like. Matt. I um, I, he's gonna like kind of like groggily like a like a horse up. Right. Um, I'll go get Max. <laughs> what? Do don't worry about it. I just wanted to let you know. And he like he's just like being extremely awkward as possible. He's just like uh, the the wall, the wall's up. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I just um, I wasn't really entirely sure if you wanted to be up for the day or not. Uh, um. Um. Uh, wall's good. <laughs> 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 right, right. Um, yeah, I'll go get Maxwell. He's upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, he heads upstairs, and uh, after like a couple of minutes, comes back down with none other than Maxwell himself. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Max a million swords. <laughs> And uh, Max looks, <laughs> Max looks extremely groggy. He's just like, yeah, that was really, that was really nice. Like, I mean, maybe we we could get a bed like that for me inside the castle someday. Yeah, um, I, I definitely consider it, Max. I I think you've you've earned the right to to a, a good night's sleep every once in a while. Thank you, my lord. Your compassion knows no bounds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Marth kind of like looks over to Max and, and says, You know, I I didn't see Vesuvius at last night's speech. Um, I I think I'll go visit him just to make sure everything's okay with him. I, I probably should have asked him to see if he wanted to uh, be there before he, um, you know, before the speech started up. And Max feeling feeling pretty good today. Um is like, you know what? No, 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 I got you. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll head over to the, the library and I'll uh I'll go ask him to, to meet you. Don't worry about it, okay? You uh you do what you just gotta do here. And he kind of like sees Pivot resting, he's like, you you might want to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Marth kind of like uh, sits at the end of the bar as Max leaves. 
and and Marth says, um, "Could I get a? Co- Do you guys serve coffee here?" <laughs> and uh, we will go over to the library itself. <clears throat> I got the reference key. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, Petopian Library. There we go. Don't freeze on me. No. Max walks into the library, and it feels um a bit different, kind of than it had when they last left. For some reason, it feels very cold, and the uh, the entire aura of the and atmosphere of the room has kind of changed. And as Mar- uh, Max kind of heads in, he says, "Hello, uh, Vesuvius, I, uh, his lordship himself, from on high, uh, is requesting your presence. He uh, he wants to kind of say goodbye to you one last time before Vesuvius." Uh, Headmaster Vesuvius, uh, birds? Hello? Anybody? Oh, no. And, uh, he slowly but surely comes around the corner, uh, and shocked, takes a step back to see Vesuvius is impaled with a stake up against the side of the bookshelf. And um, Max begins panicking and uh, runs over to Vesuvius to check to see if he's okay, to see if he's actually still alive. And there is no pulse. Um, And next to Vesuvius, there is a notebook open to a specific page that uh, kind of catches Maxwell's eye. And he begins reading. And it says... In the first pages of the book, The Sorrow of All Lands, by Albert Felly, it is stated, The world may offer judgment for the sins of man, but only inside can he proclaim his own sentence. It pains me to remember each page of every book in this library still after so many years. I hope you never happen upon this body, but should you, I want you to know that I'm very sorry for misleading you. Bilms was never attacked by Niall. Nary a single sword was risen against the armies of Nekalite. In fact, we were the only city in the country to surrender without a drop of blood. Of course, by the time this had happened, the Great Reset had already taken place. Many good people changed overnight. In reality, they were still, even today. I watched the city fall prey to its intangible disease of sorts. Many of the brightest minds and kindest spirits morphed into hideous creatures. Some immediately, some over the course of years. I was... no different. I was changing. Locked away in this tomb of history and knowledge, I could feel my body betray my very thoughts. There would be countless days I would spend talking of theorems and history, only to awaken and realize the day had entirely passed and no one was there. My mind was drifting ceaselessly like a snow globe in the hands of an excited child. Until one day I had a lucid moment. I woke up cold and malnourished in the Church of Chaos. I was to be killed for my lack of potential. As much as I had lost my mind, I was never able to change into another being, a monster as they had wished. I did, however, petrify, kill many. I ask not how it was possible for an insane man to sense his own folly, but it is perhaps the greatest gift of clarity ever given to me. Instead of being executed, I burnt all the books in the Petovian library, put nails through my feet, 
for every soul taken by me and cast a spell to seal myself away until the end of time. I wanted to forget. I could not, though, no matter how many years passed. But then you came. Just as Forfo Den had descended from the heavens to give Bardox another chance at life, and for a single minute I felt at ease. Happiness, pleasure at seeing my lord again, yes, but true happiness through the judgment of my sins. Carry my burdened heart and allow my repentance through your victory. Batovia needs you, Marth. I know you hate when I call you my lord, but indulge a doomed man to his final wish. Rewrite history so that the Petovian National Library may be full once more. Do this and... And the words start kind of getting more erratically spaced out on the pages. Yes, no, no. Yes, not, no, no, no. Yes... Where is, I thought, but the word, I know it's late, but I can't find my way home. Silence, tap, tap, silence, tap, tap. If only Alfrim was ten years younger, he'd have finished back in the wall, fall away now. I, no, I don't think you should, I don't, back away, don't come closer. I, I, I feel if I were to let go right now, I could fly. And on the word, blood is splattered across the rest of the page, and the sentence ends. And Max very somberly gets to his feet, knowing that full well if, if Marth knew what happened to his closest friend, he would probably lose everything that he has gained thus far. Max um, takes a couple more steps very quietly down the halls and gives a couple of, of bird whistles. Um, and he hears just the ever softest hum coming from the upstairs, which he goes to investigate. As Maxwell, as Maxwell goes up, Maxwell. <laughs> as Maxwell goes up the ladder, he happens upon the two birds. One of them has been petrified entirely, and the other is encased in mostly rock and is barely breathing and kind of has a distant look in his eyes. And uh, the bird hears Maxwell come up the ladder and says, Oh, 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 help, help, help me. I feel weak. And Max uh, kind of runs over and uh, touches the bird who's uh, completely made of stone, D. Tweedle and uh, sees that she's no longer alive and kneels before uh, dumb Tweedle and says, it's, it's okay, it's, it's okay. Everything's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> I can, I can see uh, her. Where's sister? Where's brother? Don't worry about it, they, it's just a dream. You're gonna wake up soon enough, okay? They just went on ahead of you. And as soon as you catch up, you'll wake up, okay? Okay? Just, um, just, uh... And he kind of, uh, reaches in his pocket and pulls out, uh, his cards. Just, uh, play a game with me in the meantime, okay? Uh, I'll deal. Since you, uh, yeah. And he kind of starts dealing the cards, uh, back and forth. And says... Don't worry, I'll let you know, um, I'll let you know how to play. The card game's called, um, Playing with God's Hand. 
So uh, let's see what you got here. And he kind of uh, looks at the uh, the cards dealt out to um, Dom Tweedle. You you got a good hand. You got a good start in hand. Um, I'll call the trump. And uh, Maxwell very quickly uh, deals the the cards back and forth, and uh, begins placing the cards um, in for Dom Tweedle. Don't worry, um, the game's almost over. You're doing great. I think that you have a... I think that you have a real shot, okay? Oh, oh. Thank you. Uh, you, uh... I'm sorry, you, uh... You lost the game, but... Do you, um... Do, do you see your sister now? And um, dumb Tweedle just ever so slightly closes his eyes and says, Oh, oh, dee, dee, there you are, and brother, <laughs> brother. Yeah, just close your eyes and go see him now, okay? Go see. And he kind of just uh, falls back and uh, leans up against the wall. Oh, God. Oh, God. What did they do? And that is where we are going to end tonight's episode. Motherfucker. Thank you so much for joining, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all had a spectacular evening. Um, I will be seeing you all next Friday. Um, for the next episode, we are going to be uh, furthering our adventure towards Hellspring Village. I, uh, I want to thank each and every single one of you guys for coming each, each week and uh, all your support. And uh, if you want to support me and Tori Kuno directly, uh, exclamation mark Patreon the chat. That'll pop up the Patreon for you all. Uh, just click on the link. There are several different tiers uh, which have quite a few very fun and exciting rewards. We're going to be doing uh, Bikel's commission. Um, I think maybe even tomorrow we might be able to actually do that uh, commission for, for Bikel. So um, look forward to that. 